So for our notes today, we're looking at normal distribution and z-scores. So uh, let's talk about what those mean. Normal distribution, it's this picture right here. So it's a bell curve that shows how information is distributed from the mean or the average. So right here in the center, that's our mean. And a lot of times we'll see it written as this symbol mu. Um, but remember in our calculator, it's written as x bar. I don't know why they use different symbols. It would make sense if they just used the same one. But the mean is the average of the data. So in a bell curve, it's that middle number. It's that middle line. So again, normal distribution, it's a bell curve. that shows how information is distributed from the mean. I'll say how data is distributed. From the mean. So the mean is representing, these are, these are all of our data points. The mean is going to represent the average of those, okay? And you're going to notice we've got 1, 2, 3, and then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And they've all got these little symbols with them. You remember what that symbol means? That symbol is referring to standard deviation. So standard deviation. And... Um, standard deviation, it's, it's a value that we've calculated in last night's homework, but it's, it's telling us how things are spread, spread out and compared to the mean. So if the mean is a value here, 64, I'm sorry, 34% of the data is between the mean and one standard deviation more than that. Standard deviation is just a number, so it's like we're adding one of those, the rest of the data is going to be in that. So if we look at how much data is in between one standard deviation of the mean either direction, that's 34 plus 34 for a total of 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the mean. Then if we look even further, within two standard deviations, that's that 68% plus another 13.3 and 13.3 for a total of about 95%. So 95% of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean. So it's pretty close to the mean. And then about 99% will fall within three standard deviations. So 99%. So a majority of our data is going to fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So let's look at what this means. Um, so we'll check out an example. So the grades on a statistics midterm are normally distributed with a mean of 81 and a standard deviation of 5. So let's go ahead and draw and label a bell curve showing this normal distribution. So bell curve, really it's called a bell curve because it looks like a bell. All right. And the mean is 81, they told us. Okay, draw a little line. And then a standard deviation of 5. So that means that one standard deviation above 81 would be 81 plus 5, or 86. One standard deviation below would be 76. Okay, and remember 34% of the data is between 81 and 86, 34% of the data is between 76 and 81. Then if we go one more standard deviation, that's 5 more than 86, so 91. So that's a 13.5%. Then if we go one standard deviation in the opposite direction, that's going to take us down to 71, 13.5%. Finally, down one more takes us to 66. This is 2%. One more. Uh, well, it's actually just going to continue. And then one more above 91 would give us 96, so that's 2%. And then this remaining amount is 0.5% of the data, so 0.5%. So that's how this data is spread out according to these midterm grades, with a mean of 81 and then standard deviation every five points. So the first question, what percent of the data falls between 76 and 86? So well, 76 is here and 86 is here. So 
that's a total of 34 plus 34, 68 percent. What percentage of data falls between 71 and 91? 71 is here, 91 is here, so that's that 13.5, two of those, and two 34s for a total of 95 percent. What percentage of data falls between 81 and 91? So 81 and 91 has a 34% and a 13.5 for a total of 47.5%. 47.5%. What percent of the data is less than 86? So you could do this a couple ways. Um, you could add up, if 86 is here, you could add up all of these degrees, or you could just take 100 and subtract 13.5 plus 2 plus 0.5, we're going to get that it's a total of 84%. Okay, so we just talked about normal distribution using a bell curve, and we talked about how much of the data is one standard deviation away from the mean, two standard deviations away, and so on. So the next thing we're going to talk about is z-score. Okay, so z-score is a value. It's just a number. It, it shows how many standard deviations a data value is from the mean. So it shows how many standard deviations a value is from the mean. So standard deviation remembers that little sigma, and the mean is mu, but on our calculator it's written as x bar. So this is the formula, and this will be on your formula sheet. Z is the z-score. X in this represents the data value. So that's what we're trying to find out how far away it is. Mu means mean, and sigma means standard deviation. So we're going to use this information or this formula to plug in information. Example 1, the grades on a statistics midterm are normally distributed with a mean of 81, standard deviation of 5. Find the z-scores for the following. So we're going to use our z-score formula. If the data point is 65, we're going to do 65 minus a mean of 81 over a standard deviation of 5. When we simplify that in our calculator, we should get negative 3.2 is the z-score. And that's all it is. It's negative 3.2 standard deviations away. For the next one, same formula, but this time the data point is 83. So 83 minus a mean of 81 over 2. I'm sorry, over 5. And that'll give us 0 0.4. Finally, 100. That's our data point. So it's going to be 100, our data point minus the mean of 81 over standard deviation of 5 for a final answer of 3.8. So again, this formula is going to be given to you on your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize it. We just have to know what everything means. And I believe that uh, these symbols are going to be labeled on your, um, on your formula sheet. Okay, go ahead and try example 2 on your own. Let's see, find the z-scores for each team. So using this data, you're going to have to actually plug it into your L1 and find the mean, find the standard deviation from your one var stats. So use your calculator for that. Good luck.